I woke up from a dream. I saw a Pakistani man wearing a bathrobe emerging from the sky and he looks at me and he whispers, you are the Adonis now. <laughs> no one is going to replace Hamza because Hamza that you see on screen is not the entire Hamza. The Hamza off screen is extremely logical, extremely intelligent. And on screen, Hamza leans into his emotional intelligence. He leans into his relatability. I'm not trying to say that Hamza is being disingenuous or dishonest. I'm just saying Hamza has different aspects of his personality. And depending on what he's trying to communicate and who he's communicating with, he has the emotional ability to regulate his personality in that way. Hamza being as intelligent as he actually is, he knew exactly what he was doing when he inspired you to make your YouTube channel, to start your YouTube journey. But I am here to tell you that you will most likely fail. So what am I doing here? I'm trying to make myself some eggnog. In the next five to 10 minutes, I'm gonna tell you why your YouTube channel is gonna fail and hopefully make myself some amazing eggnog along the way. For those of you who don't know, eggnog is a protein rich, fat rich, amazing testosterone boosting drink, so long as it's made correctly. So eggnog is a Christmas tradition and you know people like me from India we don't really celebrate Christmas so I learned it from a friend. So Hamza sells the idea that all you need to succeed on YouTube is radical honesty, consistency, and sharing your journey through your own self-improvement. I don't think that's true because nobody cares about your self-improvement journey, bro. Nobody cares about your nofap journey, man. Okay, so you were struggling with porn addiction and drugs and whatever it was, and then now you go to the gym and now women finally want to talk to you. Nobody cares. That story has been done. Hamza has a monopoly on the self-improvement journey of breaking drugs and bad habits and becoming Adonis. So if you are trying to do the same exact thing as Hamza, you are going to fail. You can not out Hamza Hamza. Understand if you're doing a self-improvement type channel, then Hamza is your enemy. Hamza is the competition. That's the guy you're trying to take views away from and you are not going to succeed. I guarantee you. Hamza has some serious advantages in this space. Firstly, I've already talked about how Hamza is intelligent, more intelligent than you think. He's also very well-spoken. He has an amazing camera presence. He's also relatively handsome and he's also jacked. You might know the first video of his that actually blew up was his aesthetic body transformation video. So he was already jacked before he got big on his channel. He used that as a leverage and as a advantage to grow his masculinity channel because of course if you want to build a masculinity channel you better be looking masculine. He's also perfected his storytelling skills and if Hamza worked on his storytelling skills for years before he got as good as he is right now. So when you are trying to start a self-improvement journey that's the guy who you're competing with. So what am I doing here? I've added myself one cup of whole milk. I'm going to do half a cup of what's called heavy whipping cream. This has all the fats. So Hamza tells you this idea that if you're just two steps ahead of the guy who you're trying to help, then that's enough and that person can learn from you. I disagree with this. Imagine you're learning boxing, right? Do you want to learn boxing from the guy who just has one more year of experience than you in boxing? No, you don't. You want to learn boxing from a champion. You, know, you want to learn boxing from somebody who's actually been in the ring and has won some competitions. You want to learn boxing from a guy who knows how to box. And same is true for self-improvement. I have no problem with learning things from Hamza because he has been on the journey longer than I have. That's why his content sells. You, on the other hand, you barely started. Why would other people want to listen to your story? And the idea of relatability. So Hamza tries to paint himself as a relatable character. And he does a very good job of this. But understand that relatability is not a virtue in itself. Just because you're relatable doesn't mean I want to watch your content. Andrew Tate is a good example of this. He's not relatable at all. What color is your guy? Andrew Tate is an aspirational type motivational speaker. He's in prison now, he's highly controversial. Regardless of what you think about him, the fact is he did an excellent job of promoting you know, hyper-masculine character by not being relatable, but rather by being an aspirational figure for a lot of young men. And I was reminded of this idea from Jake Tran that people will watch you, people will consume your content if you provide them an unfair advantage. If you're trying to create a channel on YouTube, you need to be providing something that nobody else can provide, providing an angle that nobody else can compete with, and also giving your audience something that's going to give them an advantage in whatever they're pursuing. So I'm going to go ahead and separate these egg yolks from the whites. So what I'm gonna do is catch the yolks and let the whites just go through my fingers and separate them. That's the easiest way I know to separate the eggs from the whites. If you have a better idea, feel free to add that to the comments. I'll call you out. 
And of course, everything I'm saying to you is true for my channel. So I cannot continue to use Hamza's name to get views and likes and comments. The fact is that's simply unsustainable. I need to be providing you value, which is independent of Hamza. I need to have a different edge and provide different value so that I'm not competing with Hamza. Well, I already know what that is for me. I'm a biologist. And so I know a lot about nutrition and health. I'm going to create this channel around boosting your testosterone because my view is that even before mental health, hormonal health comes first. My view, and you might disagree with it, is you fix your hormonal health and your mental health fixes itself and so does your physical health. See, Hamza's framework is you fix your mental health first and that's the cause for improvement across your life. I don't disagree with that, but my view is hormonal health comes even before that. So in this channel, you're going to learn cooking skills. You're going to learn how to make yourself highly nutritious, testosterone boosting foods while you pursue your self-improvement. My take on this is completely different from Hamza's. I've never seen Hamza cook anything. I also have military experience, so I can share stories from uh, being a machine gunner in the US Army. And that's something completely different which Hamza is not able to do. These things, these experiences, my journey and my unique knowledge about hormones and testosterone etc give me an edge which Hamza doesn't have gives me a competitive space in which I'm not competing directly with him and then there is the issue of commitment so you want to get your egg whites whisked that you can kind of see these peaks forming that's perfect. perfect. So the issue of commitment. Now you might think commitment is the same thing as discipline. And you might say, I'm committed to YouTube. I'm going to make three videos per week. Commitment is not the same thing as discipline. For example, I'm committed because my video editor, Jan, I've committed that I'm going to pay him full-time salary for three months. And that means I'm going to have to use his skills. That means I have to produce the videos to justify his pay. So I'm committed. My money is already committed to this purpose. That, in my opinion, is a higher level than just straight up discipline. All right, I'm going to put this milk mixture on the heat. Hopefully I don't focus on this and let it boil over, but we'll see. So commitment is not simply this iron mind idea. All you Andrew Tate types are going to be like, iron mind, I'm disciplined, I can fucking be committed. No, commitment is also about creating success frameworks, success structures in your life, which help you to do the things that you want to do. For example, my gym has this unique feature, hats off to them. I commit to being at the gym at a certain time or a certain day. And if I don't check in at the time, they actually find me $5. Yeah, $5 is not a lot, but that $5 commitment gets me to the gym when I promise I'll be there. That's an example of a success structure that keeps me going even if I don't feel like going. All right, just gonna wait for this milk to start steaming. All right, so I don't want to get my milk to a boil. I'm gonna stop when it just starts steaming, right? That's when it's gonna be perfect. So I've gone ahead and added my whisked egg whites to the milk. Now I'm going to go ahead, break these yolks, mix them up a little bit. Yeah, there it is. Add it in, blend this mixture. And of course, you have vanilla extract, which you don't really need for this recipe, but I do think it adds a little bit extra taste. So I've been giving you discouragement for 10 minutes straight. I've been telling you all the reasons why your YouTube channel is going to fail. At this point, if you decide that perhaps you need to wait for a little bit longer until you find that edge and then come back to YouTube, then you have my understanding. If you instead decide that you're going to go for it anyways, that you think you're ready and you're going to do YouTube regardless of what I've said just now, then you have my respect.